I then have some practical tips for multiplex PCR, which can really be used for all kinds of PCRs. You should give yourself plenty of time because it, it does take time and you should label, 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 write everything out beforehand. Um, if you have if you have the time for it, I think you should make the time for it. Plan out your 96 well plate, even if it means drawing out 96 boxes and writing exactly what's going in every well and then stick it up on the cupboard before you when you're doing your work because this will really help you to uh, keep track of everything. Have a clean and tidy workspace. Consider using a sterile cabinet if you are working in a microbiological lab and don't want to risk contamination. Use dedicated pipettes and nuclease-free filter tips. After cDNA synthesis, always do a test PCR to ensure that there is actually cDNA so that you don't spend a very long time amplifying nothing. Mix your reagents well when making master mixes and spin your PCR plates briefly before you run them if you are running plates. If you're running tubes, spin tubes. Aliquot your template and primers to prevent multiple freeze thaw cycles. Store your primers in a buffered solution for long-term storage. Uh, perform a melting curve analysis um, plus possibly agaros gels after real-time PCR runs if using CyberGreen. This is important to, cho to have an idea on how many amplicons were actually uh, detected and how and um, yeah and also how specific the primers were because a melting curve analysis will allow you to to see any off-target uh, amplifications that have occurred. If you're in doubt about any of your samples um, it's always a good idea to run them on an agarose gel because it's the best way of seeing what actually happened. You can also see primer dimers very nicely there as well. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.